Now if you want to stripe that tail, the best thing to do is stripe it while it's in the vise. And that means striping it before you tie the wing on. Imagine the wing's not there. You can quite easily hold that tight and stripe it with a marker pen. Absolutely super. But we're not going to bother. We're just going to use it like it is. That's rather nice. A bit more lightish around the eye. I rather like it, a bit of a fire orange job. Lovely. All that's left to do now is get some eyes on there. So we'll do that next. Now I like to use fluorescent eyes for these patterns. I like nice bright. This is an attractor flyer when all said and done, so. Attraction is the name of the game, and I think fluorescent materials seem to do that better than most. And now I quite like these fluorescent green ones. It goes with orange. I flat down on the on the bench. Now you can see I've quite well soaked the head of the fly there with glue and I'm letting it soak in. Not till it's dry, but I'm letting it soak right into the fibres. That way I get the best grip. Hold the side of the fly down, pop the eye on. There you go. Beautiful. Bottom of the eye level with the bottom of the shank. As soon as this stuff takes a while to dry, you have to keep squashing it down every now and again. Being as these are soft eyes, they do actually form to a shape too, so all that remains to do now, glue the other side on when that's dry. So how to finish the head? <coughs> Coffee stirrer from McDonald's into the pot of goop get a big lump of it on there it's quite a long way this stuff do a lot of flies with one bottle and then just spread all that around make sure you coat all the way along underneath right up to those fibres expose it to the light for a few seconds be careful not to leave your glue in front of the light because it goes off in the bottle the brown bottle helps but it doesn't prevent it altogether uh, that's quite stiff enough for us to work on the other side there we go Use the brush from the pot to just move that round. Don't worry about a few fibres getting caught in it, you can always pull them off afterwards. Yeah, it's nicely done. Try not to fill the eye up. And that's about it. You can keep building up this stuff over and over and over again if you want to form a really big head. Other than that, just use what you have to. The more you put on, the heavier the front of the fly will be. If you're having problems getting your flies to fly in the air, in other words, problems with casting them, put bigger heads on. These synthetic materials, they don't hold water and what tends to happen is you get drag in the air as opposed to a big heavy weight um, it's not like casting a wet sock it's more like casting a paper bag so but they do work loads better in water than natural materials I think they're brighter they're more durable they don't fall to bits let's 
sides look underneath and there's your finished fly Like I say, the nice thing about this fly is its erratic side-to-side -side movement as you pull it. It's got a lot of kind of balloony type materials here which makes it sink like that in the water as opposed to head first. And when you pull it, the tail waggles from side to side and up and down. Absolutely irresistible. And with that bit of flash underneath, all the flash concentrated there, there's a real aiming point for pike to come up from underneath and smash into them, which they do on a regular basis. Hot pink's been really good. Orange has been good. This new bright orange, I'm looking forward to using this. Um, black's good. Lots of colours. Whatever's your favourite colour on your chosen water, use it. Any colour you like. Happy Christmas, and we'll see you again.